Hello there. Welcome to the 11th episode of The Recap. The Recap is my take of an online podcast which seeks to explain for our English B students poems that appear in the English B syllabus 2018 to 2023. I am Jermaine Hatton and today is the 30th day of July 2017. Today we are looking at the poem Dreamin' Black Boy by James Berry. Let's go straight into that. Dreaming Black Boy, James Berry. I wish my teacher's eyes wouldn't go past me today. Wish he'd know it's okay to hug me when I kick a goal. Wish I myself wouldn't hold back when an answer comes. I am no wood chopper now, like all ancestors. I wish I could be educated to the best of tune up and earn good money and not sink to lick boots. I wish I could go on every crisscross way of the globe and no persons or powers or hotel keepers could make it a waste. I wish life wouldn't spend me out opposing. Wish same way creation would have me stand, it would have me stretch and hold high my voice, Paul Robeson's, my inside eye of sun. Nobody wants to say hello to nasty answers. I wish a third trolls of night would burn lights with decent times. Wish plotters in pajamas would pray for themselves. Wish people wouldn't talk as though I dropped from Mars. I wish only boys were scared behind bravados. For I could suffer. I could suffer a big, big lot. I wish nobody would want to earn the terrible burden. I can suffer. So James Berry is actually Jamaican, but he spent most of his time in the United Kingdom and some amount of years as well in the United States. He had a first-hand experience of how black boys, how black people generally were treated in that early 20th to mid 20th century period there. Uh, he Most of his work was poetry reflecting on Jamaican and British culture and he also tried to merge them to make it into something new. His poetry explores the experience of black men, particularly black boys particularly, in Britain. So he examined just how it is to be black in Britain at that point in history there. The title, uh, Dreaming Black Boy, is somewhat deceptive. It's deceptive in the sense that it can be telling us something to do with a boy dreaming of fantastic adventures, or it can be telling us about a boy dreaming about becoming a successful man in the future. Uh, the subject here we see is the black boy. It didn't talk about the white boy or it didn't just say boy, it actually specified or giving the, giving the adjective there black to tell us that the dreams of a black boy is different to the dreams of a white child or a normal boy so they had to specify uh, uh, Barry had to specify hinting to us that just how much history has it of suffering and discrimination when it comes to people who were black uh, the speaker the speaker of the poem it's interesting because it can actually be two individuals. It can be the boy actually experiencing these things or it can be an adult reflecting on what used to go on when he was a child. The mood is obviously a sad one, full of despair, deep suffering to, to see this boy or to see this individual just longing for simple things that every person is to really um, experience. and how much the world uh, during the time of slavery or just after the abolition of slavery uh, people were still being treated differently because of the color of their skin it's a very sad poem uh, it's no coincidence I was I'm doing this around the first of August I in fact wanted to release it in the first of August but things made me not do that but let's go straight into that poem summary so here we see at the start of the poem, and it con continues throughout the poem, a series of repetition. The repetition gives us the idea, the I wish, I wish, wish, I wish, I wish, gives us the idea that 
the boy longs. He longs or he's desperate for some basic things in life. Uh, we will see some of that as we go through it. But it gives us the idea how desperate this boy was to be treated normal. Hmm? Or to be treated like the typical person or typical boy. Started by saying, I wish my teacher's eyes wouldn't go past me today. And that is interesting. It's interesting because if you imagine yourself in class and you're often or the teacher often asks students to give their views, call on them individually and you are never called upon, how would you feel in that regard? The same thing is implied here. This little boy who wants to be treated normal or wants to be treated like every other, everyone else in the class, but he doesn't want the teacher to continue to pass on him as he's, he's not existing. So he wants to be given an equal opportunity like everyone else in the class. He craves the attention of the teacher like any other child growing up. They really want the attention. It goes on to talk about wish he'd know is wish he'd know is okay to hug me when I kick a goal. So imagine you are playing and you are the person that scores and the, the, the team is there celebrating without you. How would that feel? So the, the guy wants the teacher to know it's okay to hug me. Yes, I am the reason why you're celebrating, but it's okay to celebrate with me. And that's what he wants to paint the picture of. And he says, I wish myself would not hold back when the answer comes. So imagine the teacher is asking, does anyone know the answer? And you know the answer but because the teacher constantly not pay much of attention to you you are not motivated to respond and he says because he's black because he is not typical he somewhat is dissuaded from responding he is not motivated to respond might not have the courage to respond i am no what chopper now he's making a declaration this is interesting because it's telling us, and, and it, uh, it, it alludes to, and it's a form of allusion, it alludes to slavery, uh, that the, the, the Africans or the persons of color were given menial jobs, or jobs that involve stripping wood or cutting uh, cane or fetching water, and not high level jobs. So he's saying, I'm no wood chopper. He's saying, he's making a declaration that he doesn't want to be like everyone else who is black. He wants to be given another opportunity. He wants to be given the opportunity to be a typical person just like his white counterparts. And he's making that declaration there. And this is actually giving us a hint that because he is black, his destiny is controlled. Because he's black, he has to be a wood chopper. But he is adamant that he's no wood chopper like his ancestors were. Goes on to repeat again, I wish. Life wouldn't spend me out opposing. To give us the idea that everything in this life was against him. All right? Which the same way creation would have me stand, it would have me stretch and hold high my voice, Paul Robeson. Now, this Paul Robeson was an intellectual, a black intellectual who was... Uh, surpassed many difficulties to become successful so he's alluding to Paul Robeson and he's saying his voice is like Paul Robeson and he will be successful as well yes he has to face many difficulties but he is adamant that he is going to be like Paul Robeson and he is also going to be successful nobody wants to say hello to nasty answers Obviously, we know what that means, as is. Nobody wants to be rejected by the world. Nobody wants to be treated unfairly. I wish, again, repeating, torch throwers of night would burn lights with decent times. Now, this is making another allusion here to the KKK, and I'm going to try not to talk about this too much because I can get upset when I actually talk about it. Uh, the KKK is a group who was known to burn, I'm saying was here, I'm not going to say anything else, I'm saying was, who was a group that was known to, to burn uh, black people alive because they claim that it's a sacrament uh, or it's uh, a ritual giving blessings or, or giving uh, 
religious offering to God and burn them alive as a sacrifice because they, they are not human or they're, they're less of human than they are and so he's saying he's making this this he's, he's saying here he wished that these torch throwers these white people who are burning black men alive would burn light with decent time would burn or would light those crosses and they, what that that's what they did they made crosses and they put these black men on the cross and then they lit the cross a fire and he's saying that he wished that they would burn those crosses with decent times what's he saying he's saying he wants the group to leave him alone he wants that group to give him the opportunity to live out his life and he's saying wish plotters in pajamas would pray for themselves going on to tell us that what is going on here is not just a, a problem he's facing but everyone else is also facing that and he wish for these prayers that they, they claim to be giving to God as their sacrament should also be what they are giving for themselves because really they're not doing anything here but harm people people just like themselves which people wouldn't talk as they dropped from mars obviously people talking as though he hadn't uh, a feelings uh, probably being prejudiced here and feeling and giving the idea that when he's around people talk as though he is no human being so this little piece here was omitted from my explanation just now so I'm going to talk about this quickly. I wish I could be educated to the best of tune up and earn good money and not sink to lick boots. This here is, is obvious. It's telling us that the boy wishes to be well educated. It's interesting to see what this boy is wishing for. He's not wishing for grand and expensive things. He's wishing to be normal. He's wishing to be educated because he sees education as the way out, right? So we need to understand that. And he wishes to be educated and well-traveled. Yes, he wants to go around the world. But he also uses the phrase licking boots, demeaning, of course, to show us really that he doesn't want to be living a subservient life. He wants to thrive, he just doesn't want to barely make it from day to day. He wants to, to thrive and he wants to have unbarred access to places. You see, back in the times of, um, I don't want to say slavery, but back in the times just after the abolition of slavery or probably just after uh, blacks were given certain rights uh, in the developed parts of the world, they were still barred from certain places. Like, for example, I, I know particularly of Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali, uh, when he went back after winning, I think the first, um, I think it, I do think it was the Olympics. Uh, he won a gold medal there. He thought that with this gold medal, he can now live or he can now eat in the fancy restaurants. And he was still barred. He was still barred from eating at these fancy eateries and what what was interesting is that even though he was a world champion even though he was someone who represented the United States of America he was still black and that blackness prevented him from being normal <laughs> I hope you're hearing the intonation here because I want you to realize how serious it is so people were barred from going to fancy hotels, people were barred from going to fancy restaurants, people were barred from using particular sides of the bus, the public transportation when they're traveling. The, so this guy doesn't want to be barred, he wants to live an unbarred life and he wants to be living a life that is not discriminated because the, of the color of his skin. Alright, so that is what you should be taking away from there. Here we see a very, very important part, brilliantly put together by Barry. He says, I wish only boys were scared. To tell us that boys were not the only ones scared. Children were not the only ones scared. The adults were scared as well. The adults were humiliated of what was going on in the society. They were afraid. They were afraid of the KKK. They were afraid of the opportunities they were given. They were afraid of how limited the, their life was when it came to living in, in this era. So 
he's trying to tell us that he wishes only children were scared. He wishes that the adults would comfort these children, would comfort him, and let him know that, you know what? Things are going to get better. But the adults couldn't have done that because they themselves were also scared. He goes on to say, for I could suffer. And he's repeating that suffer because he wants to give us the idea that how black people were was akin, and I'm using this loosely, was akin to suffering. He's showing us that being black was equal to suffering was equal to pain, was equal to sadness. He said he could suffer a big, big lot. He's repeating that. He's saying that what is going on because of his skin color makes him suffer a dear lot. He says, I wish nobody could would want to earn this terrible burden I could suffer. So even though this guy, even though he's reflecting here, and even though he is hurt, and he wants it to end, he's not wishing it upon anyone else. He's saying he doesn't want anyone to feel this way he's feeling. So hint to us that even though he's feeling such great pain, he's not wishing for the white person to feel the pain. He's not wishing for his, his other colleagues to feel the pain. He wishes nobody would have to feel that pain. And that is sad. This poem, Dreaming Black Boy, can be compared to, to any other poem under the following themes, uh, racism, survival, oppression, dreams, desires. Remember, this young man is dreaming. He's desiring to be treated like a normal child. He wants to be treated as if his skin color uh, were, wasn't important. And he wants to be given an opportunity like anyone else to be successful. And he's saying as well, that he doesn't wish for the burdens of being black to be placed on any any other individual so that there is very very important a good poem for this to be compared with is a uh, theme for english b or any other poem that focuses on these themes here that was dreaming black boy like this comment subscribe until next time, the next poem to look out for is Theme for English B. A link will be in the description to that. Goodbye.